Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandra and I make videos about personal finance, um, having a career in technology, as well as just life vlogs. So definitely stick around and check out my other videos if you're interested. And today we're gonna be talking about how to find a cybersecurity job right out of college. I'm gonna be sharing tips that I use in my job search to kind of help you guys and kind of get your foot in the door for cybersecurity. Okay, so I guess just starting out, there's probably a lot in cybersecurity and I know that everyone has different values and different um, tastes in what they actually want to do, even if you're not completely sure about where you want to go right now, which is kind of where I was at in my senior year of college, or even like if you're just in your early career or mid-career and you want to make a pivot. For example, if you want to go into pen testing or red teaming, blue teaming, um, cybersecurity strategy, the analytical side of cybersecurity, there's a lot of paths that you can choose. And for the most part, it's going to be a little hard to kind of decide where you want to go if you don't really have an idea yet or don't have experience yet. This advice is kind of just going to be holistic or anywhere that you want to go in cybersecurity. So so the first thing is to get experience and I'm not talking about like getting an internship um, I'm talking about doing your own due diligence and getting experience yourself I think the best way to do that especially if you're in college or like in your early career is to do hack the box or capture the flag challenges these are basically just environments or challenges that are available and hack the box is probably the one that you'll find most useful as a beginner and I can include a invite for hack the box down below it's completely free but like through the invite you basically have to hack this website and it's basically gonna be a website that already has security flaws and you're basically just going to try to exploit them to be able to get into the platform and basically hack the website so it has a bunch of different challenges where they have like web applications and then you just go in there and hack it and honestly it's a really good way to get experience and for the most part you can't just go around hacking like random people's websites uh if like you don't tell them or like don't have a contract to actually do that so this is like a really good way to get first world experience or like real world experience and after you click on the invite code it's basically going to be like oh like hack this page to be able to actually join the platform and that first initial hacking challenge is already like super fun so i definitely think you guys will have a really good time doing that and there's also like a bunch of tutorials if you guys want to check online there's definitely like guides out there to help you if you're a beginner and another thing is capture the flag so capture the flag is similar to hack the box but it's usually like a challenge that like has a certain period of time and you can probably find a whole bunch of them for free online but if you're already working your company might have capture the flag challenges as well as different security organizations online that you can find and basically it'll give you like a month period or something and you can do it alone or with the team and they give you an environment that is exploitable and you can basically try to hack it just like hack the box but but there's like a certain period of time where you're able to hack it and then there's like a leaderboard and stuff like that so it's definitely a really good way to do it if you and a group of friends or like you and a partner want to try it i definitely recommend capture the flag because that's kind of where i got my hands dirty in cybersecurity and really like one of the first ways that i got experience in cyber and of course another thing that you guys can do is is to practice in your own kali linux environment so you can download kali for free and you can practice using metasploit um, as well as different commands. Of course, like you can't just go around hacking everyone's website. Um, I don't think that's legal, but for the most part, you can practice with it just like your command prompt. And I really think that like learning Linux um, is really important because you're gonna probably be on like command prompt for majority of the time if you're gonna be like going to web app pen testing or doing like red team. So you definitely want to get more experience with that and getting used to like just being able to write on the command line and eventually you won't have to use a browser you're just going to be like feeling websites on the command line and it's just going to be like second nature to you um i'm still going through that so i'm still kind of learning as i go but i definitely think that's the point where i want to get to and Honestly, there's so many things that you can do on command line and you don't even have to worry about going on the browser waiting for the page to load. Like, it's so much easier actually, but um, yeah, that's definitely something that I'm still working on too. So another easy way to get started is to learn about the tools in Cyber. So a lot of these tools have community editions, so you can use it for free and download like a community license. And really popular tools that I've seen for web app pen testing or red teaming are like Burp Suite, um, Remina, Covenant, Bloodhound, a bunch of different Linux tools like LDAP Domain Dump is a good one. And just like basic Linux commands like all around like and all of this is going to be really helpful once you actually start interviewing or actually doing some real hands-on work with pen testing or red teaming because a lot of these tools are really niche and you really have to use them to learn them um, especially Burp Suite like there's so many different things that you can do on there and there's so many different tabs that you can learn and honestly I've only really used Burp Suite minimally I'm not really at that level yet Wireshark is a really good one to learn too um, I think that one they usually teach in college courses if you're taking like a network security class because that's kind of the one that I really got started with when I was in college I'm not sure 
Wireshark has a free edition, but I know a lot of the original pen testing tools that I previously listed, as well as just like Googling like top 10 most popular pen testing tools or like um, cybersecurity tools, you can probably find a list of them and kind of just go through and see which ones are most interesting to you or useful to you. And of course using Metasploit, um, Metasploit is really popular, so definitely um, get some experience with that. But I definitely think that just being able to do that hands-on by yourself and just using it on like Hack the Box or like different um, Capture the Fly challenges where you guys can use these tools legally um, is really helpful for when you actually go into a interview for a cybersecurity role. You already know these tools, you already know the foundations and the background. So that's gonna be really helpful for you once you're actually looking for a job. Okay, so the next thing is certification. Now I know this one's kind of iffy because when I was in college, I wasn't really looking at professional certifications, especially because I had like other classes to study for. But for example, my school actually had a certification or a bunch of certification programs that they distributed rather than like CompTIA or some kind of official organization that provides certification. So for example, my school, I was able to get my certification in computer security and digital forensics while I was in my bachelor's or while I was an undergrad and basically I was able to kind of merge it with my courses so I was able to get my required courses but take the courses that were required for the certification so I was able to basically get that certification only by taking like one or two extra classes on top of my regular undergrad curriculum anyway so it was kind of really worth it because it's a free certification like I'm not taking any extra classes for it I'm literally just taking my required courses for my majors electives as well as like one or two courses on top that I probably needed to take anyway to get the credits to graduate so it's not like I was taking like extra summer classes or something so i definitely recommend checking that out if you're still in college and able to or if you're close to a community college they may have a certification program that is nearby that may be cheaper um something where you can like take courses and then get the certification rather than taking like one big test that you're studying for and i definitely recommend that as a starting point if you're kind of just trying to get your foot in the door and not really ready to sit down for like a month or two months to like heads down study for a like professional certification that was definitely one thing that i did in college but for right now if you're already a professional and you're in your earlier mid-career the certification that i'm currently studying for is the CompTIA security plus certification and that's kind of like the beginner cybersecurity certification that i think a lot of people start with and right now i'm studying for that i'm probably going to be taking the exam in late september or mid-september they are actually changing up the exam in october and adding a mobile security section so if you are trying to get this certification you should definitely act fast and start studying now because once you take the certification it's going to last three years honestly like if you're going to take it anyway within the next three years then you might as well take it now otherwise you're going to be adding a new mobile security section and you're going to basically have to study that whole new section for the same certification yeah it's honestly just like more efficient if you're just able to study beforehand without having to study for that extra section but of course you should study the mobile security section if you're interested in it but it's also just one less thing to worry about if you're going to be taking that exam and you have to pass it and of course there are other certifications that are a little down the line that i'm looking at like the certified ethical hacking certification or the certified information security systems professional certification the cissp that one's also a popular one so there's a lot of different ones you can probably find one that suits you more but for the most part the security plus is kind of like the most basic one, but I know CompTIA has a bunch of different beginner level certifications. So I think they have one on like networking um, and different like niche subjects like that. So I definitely recommend looking into those as well if they're more suited to your role. Okay, so another thing is to know your foundations. So this will be really easy for you if you're already studying for something or if you're currently in school now, because you're kind of going to be able to take relevant coursework. So for example, I took a bunch of network security courses. I took digital forensics. I took a bunch of operating system classes where I was able to kind of learn about like the NIST framework, like different software development life cycles, as well as security embedded in them, the CIA triad, a bit about OWASP, and just basically just different concepts that kind of just stick with you um, even in your full-time role. For example, if I'm in a meeting and I hear a concept that I don't really know too well, but I've heard it in one of my courses, which is like 80% of the time, it really does happen. Um, even though I know the concept, I don't know it completely, but at least I'm not completely lost in the conversation because I have no idea what this like acronym means or I have no idea what they're talking about. So I definitely recommend relevant coursework, especially network security and operating system. I think network security was one of the most fundamental classes that I took, um, especially for the role that I'm in now. And I also actually took a course on quality assurance and testing and that course actually is really relevant to me now as well even though it's not exactly cybersecurity but since I'm testing web applications um, and kind of just like on the DLP data loss prevention side of things this class actually really helps because they taught me exploratory testing um, like secure coding low test stress test 
and a bunch of different like concepts that I was really not introduced to at all in my other classes. And if you're out of school, I definitely recommend just looking online at the concepts. I mean, a really good starting point is actually the Security Plus exam and all the topics that they cover from like routers to IDS, IPS, the different network layers, and honestly anything that you can kind of get your hands on or kind of wrap your head around on a high level is really helpful, especially if you're going to be going into interviews. And I've actually went into interviews where it literally sat me down and gave me a piece of paper with a quiz on it and asked me different questions like, like what port is HTTPS, when would you use SSH, as well as questions about if an intruder got into the network, um, what would you do, like how would you know to detect it, and how would you try to kick them out or end their sessions. And honestly, um, that was the first interview I ever did that they really treated it like a quiz and I really wasn't expecting it. And honestly, like 80% of the stuff on that quiz or like the questions that they asked me were textbook things that I could have already studied beforehand. Um, it's just that I wasn't expecting it and I really feel like that's really the way to get your foot in the door. And a really good place to start is actually the material for CompTIA Security Plus since those are really foundational um, things that you should know if you're going to cybersecurity like network security, the NIST framework, OWASP, like different port numbers and what they do, um, which ones are open by default, um, stuff like that. Then it would really help you if you kind of already knew the basics beforehand before you went into that interview. And I know like all interviews aren't going to be like this like they're probably not going to sit you down with a quiz and then like discuss it after um that was definitely the only interview i ever had that was like that but still like it's kind of just like you never know what's going to happen and it's better to know things now than kicking yourself in the butt later because you wish you knew the answer to that question and that would be like a reason that you don't get a job so like i would really hate for that to happen and it would literally haunt me if that was the case so i definitely recommend you guys to know like the basic foundational knowledge okay so the last thing that i think is really helpful and you guys probably already know know that this is coming is to get experience and I know what you're thinking like I've been there where you are looking for interviews or looking for an internship and you're in college and you're looking for a job and it's literally asking you for a year two years experience and you're just like but I'm a student <laughs> um, literally like it's so annoying but honestly like you have to get there somehow and I really think that the really easy ways to kind of start that is by doing capture the flag, hack the box, even the hackathons where they might have cybersecurity security challenges where they ask you to hack some kind of website and you're able to work on a team for that like that is holy grail experience and I definitely recommend doing that and those are probably like the get your foot in the door type experiences that you're going to need to be able to get your first internships and in terms of internships even if you're not able to get some kind of like cybersecurity analyst or like information security consultant type role and even if you're not like going to be like officially doing like pen testing anything cyber security related right off the bat in your internship like i still think a really good place to start is actually it help desk and hear me out like so many of my cyber security professional like co-workers actually got their foot in the door and got their first experiences in cyber security going through help desk because it's actually such important experience and foundational knowledge that you obtain just by like having someone come to you saying they can't connect to the network and you figuring out why like, why is this person not able to do it? Like, or what's wrong with this person's endpoint? Is there, like, is it blocking something? Like, is there some kind of firewall issue? Is it not configured properly? Like, there's so many things that you could look for and there's so many places to start. And I definitely think that Help Desk is actually an awesome place to really get that experience to find out like, okay, so like, why is this a problem and how can I fix it? And then another thing that you guys can do if you're not able to find a internship um, is to really ask a professor if there is a professor that teaches some kind of cybersecurity role in your school and kind of getting to know them and trying to see what kind of projects that they're working on, um, especially if they're doing some kind of research for like software-defined networking, digital forensics, Honestly, anything that's cybersecurity related is probably going to be super interesting and it's going to be so good on your resume to kind of buff it up for your future roles. And you're going to get real hands-on experience, especially if you're working with a professor because it's probably going to be just you and the professor and maybe um, a few of their grad students. This is something that I did in my undergrad, but I did it for more of a data science role because as you know, like cybersecurity is always expanding, the attack surface is always growing, Internet of Things is never going away and it's only going to get bigger. Um, and eventually, once everything is on the internet or online, people are really going to need cybersecurity and there's probably going to be a lot more research being done and you having that academia experience and doing some undergrad research with a professor is going to be such a priceless piece of experience on your resume. Even if you're not in college now, I definitely have another piece of advice for those of you who are in your early career or mid-career and kind of trying to pivot or maybe go into cybersecurity. I definitely think that this is something that you can do. So the first step is to look on LinkedIn and search up the cybersecurity role that you're interested in 
in the search bar and then kind of try to whittle it down to the people that went to the same college as you, went to the same grad school, are from the same hometown, are from the same area right now, and kind of just whittle it down and then connect with them. You don't want to reach out in that first message and just be like, hey, like I'm interested in what you're doing, like can I like talk to you or like can I ask you for advice? Like that's really a wrong way to approach it because you're just gonna be like a cold call or like a cold message and they're less inclined to actually talk to you if they don't know you. So the first thing that you should do is once you see them post something or once you see them share a promotion, maybe even share like a open role at a company, definitely like comment and like and make sure you comment honestly. For example, if they post some kind of article, like you should read it and check it out and see if it's helpful to you and like tell them, tell them if it helped you or like opened your mindset or um, kind of tell you something new. If they got a promotion, congratulate them. Um, if they're if they have a job open, um, tell them like, hey, I'm interested, I've applied, um, thank you for sharing this opportunity. And honestly, after a month or two of doing that, you are no longer a cold message. Like, they've probably seen your name pop up on their notifications on their phone um, one or two times at least, and they're gonna know your name and they're gonna know your face. So once you do that, after two to three months, maybe that's when you can actually reach out and be like, hey, like, I'm really interested in your role. I'd love to learn more about your experience and how you got to where you are today in cybersecurity. And honestly, this doesn't have to just be for cybersecurity, it could be for any role, whether it's software development, project management, like it could be anything. So definitely take this piece of advice and take it with anything that you do. It doesn't have to just be cyber. Yeah, kind of just ask them what their experience was. Tell them a little bit about your background. Like, hey, I'm currently in software development, but I love to pivot into cybersecurity. And would you mind if I picked your brain a little bit or, or chatted one-on-one -on -one and kind of just learn more about your background and how you were able to get to where you are today. And by that point, they're more inclined to say yes compared to a month or two ago when they had no idea who you were and you were basically just a random person on LinkedIn messaging them for something. And they're gonna be a lot more likely to reply. And even if they don't reply, like honestly, it doesn't hurt you. Like you should be fearless with this and you shouldn't let this affect you if they do say no or if they just don't respond to you because like, before you asked, they were already not helping you. And after you asked, they're still not helping you, so really nothing's changed. So I definitely don't think you should take a rejection or a no to heart. Either way, like it doesn't really change much in your life. And if you're doing this correctly and connected with like five to 10 people that you were already interested in, it's kind of already a numbers game at that point. And one of those people is going to be interested in helping you. And there's a lot of people on LinkedIn who are, who are interested in mentoring, um, especially if you're in your early mid career and you're trying to pivot. People love to share more about their experiences. So either way, I feel like it is a win-win. And honestly, it's really good to get that experience just reaching out to people because that's also how you expand your network. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, especially for those of you who are kind of trying to get your foot in the door um, for cybersecurity. I think the first few tips were really helpful um, in terms of just doing like hack the box, capture the flag. Um, those challenges are really hands-on experience and you can, that's going to be really important for once you're actually on the job, especially when you're in an interview and people are asking you like what kind of experience you have, what kind of background you have, if you use certain tools in cybersecurity. And these are kind of all the steps that I've taken to kind of get to my role, especially because I never had experience in cybersecurity, like actual work experience before this full-time role that I'm in now. And my background is actually in software development. So before that, I didn't have any cybersecurity experience besides getting my certification in computer security and digital forensics. So I definitely think where there's a will, there's a way. And like, I feel like if you guys are working hard for something and this is something that you really want and you're putting in the hard work to get it, like you're gonna get it. Don't let like a rejection or a no keep you down. Just know that there's always so many ways to go about doing something and so many ways to get your foot in the door wherever you're trying to go. So I hope this video was helpful in that aspect and definitely let me know in the comments if you have other questions that you'd like me to answer. Um, I'm really happy to answer them and I'd love to share more about my experiences if you guys are interested. And I do have a video that I did about my journey to cybersecurity and I can definitely link that in the description down below as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos from me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!